Hi, I'm Akash. I'm Isha. Today we visited the Red Hat Summit to catch up with Matt Hicks and Chris Wright, who are the CEO and CTO of Red Hat, to really discuss what is the practical necessities of bringing the more academic side of inference time scaling that we've been touching on in the last couple of episodes to the more realities of bringing inference time scaling to users worldwide. <laughs> So Matt, Ed, you'll agree that we're moving a little bit from static models to very dynamic AI, agentic AI applications. Um, and these, these technologies, they tend to use reasoning and other inference time scaling techniques a lot. Um, as a nice way of saying that they're going to generate a lot of tokens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're generating those tokens because generating more has been shown to make them more accurate. Now, um, when you generate more tokens, it becomes more costly. So I wanted to understand from your perspective, what role does AI platform play into abstracting and absorbing some of that complexity and costs for the enterprise user? Yeah, I think there are two things on this. The first is just being able to take advantage of the capability. So you have to have that unit price pretty low so that you're comfortable using reasoning these capabilities. And we have your particle filtering, all of these techniques that we know can drive down unit price. And to your point, if you do more inferencing, you can get better outcomes. I don't think much of our enterprise customer base right now knows how to enable particle filtering, knows how to do this. So I think one primary role of the platform is uh, giving customers the ability to turn it on. Say, I want to use these capabilities, and now I'm more comfortable doing reasoning. The second piece I think comes in, I experienced this myself, is uh, minimizing the fear response of when you have a static model and you know that this costs me 20 bucks a month or I run this on my laptop and it's just the price of electricity, which is lower, you know what your cost is going to be. When you say you can make more calls, but it's going to cost you per call and you can get great things out of it, there is a fear response for me was when I moved to using AWS Bedrock, I could do a lot more but I didn't necessarily know what my bill was going to come in. And so I think the platform being able to enable it and then give confidence that we can keep that unit price low enough that you can do these amazing things without breaking the bank. That's, that's, that's right. That's great context. So off of that context, Chris, then um, the deep sea change that it things. It made, it made almost anybody today be able to create reasoning models. Open source can now have reasoning and very, very advanced and this time is getting technologies that are powering these agentic applications. Um, what I wanted to understand a little bit from, from you is what's the open source AI roadmap in terms of reliably deploying these technologies in production? So I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example, right? Like today, if you want to put them in production, you probably have to create you know, your custom verifiers, your remote models, make sure that orchestration happens really well and timely manner, keep it sort of cost effective. Um, are there any blueprints of how to do these things today? And if not, where, how, how should we go towards building those? I mean, DeepSeek is a great example. So they came out with something that showed somewhat based on known academic research and somewhat uh, engineering innovation, showed what's possible to put a reasoning model into production and use it effectively, basically. Uh, but of course, some of that was done in an open source context. Some of that was still delivered as a service. And we're not entirely sure how all those building blocks, you've got routers and you've got this scaled out infrastructure of accelerators that are, you know, important, critical, but also hard to use in this orchestrated way. So what we're doing is figuring out there's, there's the initial single instance of inference where we can drive down the cost that Matt was talking kind of per token. Uh, but then you have to think these models are still relatively large. And even if they're smaller, you probably have concurrent users happening on the system at the same time. So you gotta be able to scale all of these inference requests and these tokens that are being provide, that are being produced to give you better and better results um, across all this infrastructure. Same with the same cost effectiveness that, that Matt's talking about. Um, so we're looking at, uh, first of all, open source is the way to bring different companies together from their experience of maybe having done this in-house um, to right. pool our resources to figure out how to do this. I think we all have ideas, but we got to do this in a way that's that's repeatable. So the initial one is kind of like the special snowflake. The rest is how do we do this consistently? There's a how-to out there. You go to GitHub, you pull some software. It's magic. It just happens. That's, that's the stage where we are right now. We're just launching a new 
project called LLMD. And its entire focus is taking that single instance of, of VLLM, of inference, and then scaling it across infrastructure. And with that, we can do all these clever things around distributing the KV cache. And with that distributed KV cache, directing requests to uh, either a prefill or a decode stage, which have very different hardware requirements. Some are very GPU intensive, some are more memory bandwidth intensive. And if you're stalled on memory bandwidth, trying to wait to produce tokens, you're wasting a bunch of infrastructure. And we talk to customers who have massive GPU farms that have maybe on a good day, 20% utilization, <laughs> which is like terrible. The goal here is to 100% saturate the hardware and produce as many tokens as needed in these new complex reasoning and agentic workflows, uh, and then do that in an optimized way. Again, sometimes you're you're really GPU limited, sometimes you're memory bandwidth limited, and you want to route the request to the, to the right location. That sounds complicated, so let's figure out how that works, and then do that in a repeatable way, integrate with Kubernetes, which is fantastic at doing distributed orchestration, and that's the blueprint that we'll be creating um, in this LLMD project and how we can use open source and collaborative work to make this repeatable. Well, thanks, thanks, Chris. Uh, so, so if I have to sort of summarize that, that's the biggest bottleneck, likely so, is we have to scale inference because today it's uh, all single, single server instance. Um, and we have to do this with the community um, yep. to create a common architecture, common framework for this new kind of uh, infants heavy workload. Yep. Well, thank you very much both for those uh, very comprehensive answers and sharing insight today. Thanks for having us. That was great, Akash. Uh, what did you think Matt had to say about the role the platform plays today in really making inference time scaling accessible for the masses? Thanks, Ija. I think Matt uh, had a very unique perspective and he was sort of uh, trying to drive two points that we think today a uh, platform will play in making these technologies most, more accessible. So the first one is around awareness. Mm -hmm. His opinion is that a lot of enterprise users may not even know about these yeah. techniques. Yeah. And he's not probably far off. <laughs> um, so that's sort of the, the one piece where you, know, you click a button and the platform orchestrate things mm -hmm. for you. Orchestrate, that's his second point. Yeah. Uh, a lot of orchestration is indeed needed. Mm -hmm. So his second point was around, well, that complexity platform has to absorb and abstract and provide some form of transparency about, well, what you did, how did that translate in the back end, and why am I charging you? What am I charging you for? Right. Right. So that's that's at least the way I think about Matt's answer on the role that today the platform yeah. will play. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So that kind of brings us right into what Chris was saying in terms of um, the gaps that open source technology needs to address in order to make inference time scaling uh, useful. Did he have any fun tidbits to share with us? So in fact, actually, um, Chris uh, shared uh, about this uh, very interesting project that they're starting, uh, LLMD. And the idea of uh, this project is to really uh, tackle the challenges of, of that you know, these heavy inference-based technologies yeah. bring. Um, so he painted this picture where he sort of told us about the current state of inferencing technology. Yeah. There are single server, server instances. And of course, great work has been done to, you know, leverage them as, as well as we potentially can. But through LLMD, apparently a group of companies are coming together to create a standard for having a distributed inference platform which, as you can imagine, yeah. is really needed if you want to ask people to generate more and more tokens. Yeah, yeah, makes a lot of sense. Thanks everyone for listening to another episode of No Math AI. Catch us next time.